Hello Flight Simmers, my name is Thomas Rasmussen and today I'm going to give you my review of X-Enviro that was released about two weeks ago. I've seen a couple of other reviews of this add-on and read the comments from people and I thought that I would give you my point of view on X-Enviro 2. Now, many of the comments have been pretty harsh and in many cases not fair. Many of the comments I read were related to the price of X-Enviro saying that $70 was an insane price for a cloud texture add-on. And I do agree, $70 is an expensive add-on. Now I'm not going to use this video to judge whether it's too expensive or not, but rather tell you about and show you what to expect from X-Enviro and then leave the judgment of price up to each and single one of you folks because whether the price is too expensive or not will largely be a matter of priority. If you just like flying and don't focus that much on the environment around you while flying, then you'll most likely be one of those that think that $70 is an insane amount of money for this plugin. On the other hand, if you, like me, think that weather is an equal important factor in the flight simulation experience as the flight modeling itself, just like it's a very important factor to take into account in real-world flying, then you might be one of those that do not find this add-on too expensive taking the immersion it adds to the sim into account. Anyway, to be fully able to judge this, it's important to understand what X-Enviro really does in the first place and how well it does it. And that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. For this review, I've been given a beta copy of the upcoming version 1.1, which the team are already working on. First, just to let you get an idea about the results with X-Enviro, I've recorded a takeoff from Kilo Alpha Uniform Sierra, Austin, Texas during a thunderstorm in X-Plane 11. Now, in my opinion, this looks very realistic. Let's get up in the air, up through the cloud layer to see how that looks. Okay, quite a lot of crosswind here. You can hear the sound from rain and thunder actually coming from X Enviro. Closing the cloud layer, you can see the lights hitting the clouds here. This looks really nice, I think. The sound from the raindrop stopped here. And here we see the sky absolutely brilliant. The colors are absolutely spot on. As you can see, even though the clouds are 2D, they don't appear 2D, which is of course a challenge that X Enviro is up against and which it in my opinion does really well. Anyhow, even though I've decided that this was not going to be a comparative review, meaning I wouldn't compare this add-on with other apparently similar add-ons. The only thing I'll say is that it is as if people think of 3D volumetric clouds, like the ones used by a competitive add-on, is equal to good quality and 2D clouds is equal to bad quality. Let me tell you, that is by no means not necessarily the case and a way too simplistic way to look at things. What's the aim of a program such as x is to simulate the appearance of the sky during different weather conditions and the measure of quality must therefore be how well this simulation is carried out within the given program. And regardless of the fact that x uses 2D clouds and not 3D volumetric clouds, I must say this. Even though this is a first version of the program and that admittedly there are bugs and things to be improved, I've never seen a program, 3D volumetric or not, have a better, more natural cloud representation in X-Plane than what X-Enviro produces. 
In addition, the 2D clouds are more frame friendly than if they had been 3D volumetric and most of the time this add-on does such a good job that you don't even think about the fact that the clouds are 2D. Here you might get an idea that the cloud resolution could be better and this is even more clear the closer you get to the clouds. Anyway, this is something that the XEnviro team have already addressed and are already working on. In that regard, it would be really great if they would then add an option to choose between low, medium and high resolution cloud textures in accordance to the system you are running Xplane on. And here we see the setting sun, really beautiful. One feature I would like to see in an update is a lens flare, maybe multiple lens flares to choose from. And the addition of good rays, also called propuscular rays, which I know the team are already working on. Okay, let's talk a little more about what XEnviro really is and what it does. Because XEnviro is not just, as many people think, just a cloud texture add-on, but rather a program that does a number of different things related to the X-Plane environment. One, it's obviously a cloud texture and weather simulation program, also simulating different types of precipitation like rain and snow in a more realistic manner than default explain. Two, it's a real weather injector, which means that clouds are precisely placed according to actual real weather, thus showing different weather conditions around you, weather fronts and so on that you'll smoothly fly into. 3. It's a sound immersion add-on with its own sound library simulating different ambient sounds, rain and thunder effects and so on. 4. And finally, it's a weather engine add-on using its own server to simulate wind, turbulence, wind shear and so on. So as you may understand, this program carries out the tasks that you would have to use 3 to 4 other payware add-ons of at least 20 to 40 dollars each to achieve. XEnviro is actually the first of its kind in that way to include all these functions in one program. This is beneficial in the way that the program simply works out of the box and you don't need to install multiple add-ons to get it all working. What's important to notice though is that there are a number of plugins that XEnviro is incompatible with, mostly other cloud and weather plugins for obvious reasons. Therefore, these need to be deleted or disabled before installing and using this plugin. Another thing to notice is that the program is not Mac compatible yet. Now let's have a look at the interface. Please remember that this is the beta of the upcoming version 1.1, so it has some additional settings compared to the initial version. You can follow the progress towards version 1.1 as well as the planned changes for upcoming updates via the link to the XEnviro roadmap in the video description. Okay, to the left you have weather settings. Here you have different slider settings for minimum runway visual range, ceiling and maximum turbulence. You can change how often the weather should be updated, going from every 5th minute to every 60 minutes. I use the program with the real setting here. Next we have cloud settings. Here we can change the maximum visible range up to 200 kilometers, the minimum visibility range and so on. You don't necessarily need to use that much time on these settings, but rather just click optimum or maximum here in the bottom. Next we have atmosphere settings. Let's move the window a bit to see what it changes. The atmosphere checkbox lets you choose between the default X-Plane 11 and the X-Enviro atmosphere. You can check or uncheck a lot of different other things here. 
Then you have post processing, which, as can be seen here, adds a little more blue and contrast to the picture. You can check or uncheck light scattering. And here are some of the new features which have not been released yet. A slider for the inbuilt default explain Rayleigh scattering and fog deviation cutoff, which is a great addition in my opinion. You have settings for sound. Again, it's very easy to control from optimum to maximum. Now let's have a look at a couple of the issues with the initial release of XEnviro, which is already being worked on and fine-tuned for upcoming updates. The first thing I'll mention is the blending of clouds with mountains that you see here and which have already been mentioned a couple of times in comments and other reviews. This blending needs to be smoothened, which as mentioned is already being worked on. Another thing, as you can see here, is the cloud resolution which I mentioned earlier in this review, which could need to be turned a notch up. Maybe, as mentioned, have a couple of settings for low, medium and high resolution. The next thing I'll mention, which have also been mentioned by others, is that some cloud layers can look flat at some occasions. You can see it here. Other things I would like to mention, which are all being addressed by the team and added to the roadmap, are sometimes you will see city lights reflecting underneath the clouds at night, even where there are no cities, over sea for example. The cloud shadows are missing or transparent, though I'm not sure whether this is a Xenviro issue or something with a change in draw order by Xplane 11. The same goes for the missing spray from the aircraft wheels on rainy runways. That might actually also be a matter of change draw order on x 11. There have also been an issue with rotation of the clouds, which as far as the roadmap tells me is already fixed. One last thing I would like to mention is that there might be an issue with VATSIM and EVAL weather. It's mentioned on the roadmap at least, I'm not quite sure what the problem is, but take a look at the dedicated forum at explain.org. A list of features that I would personally like to see in future updates include an option to set up a specific weather situation like in default explain. It would be nice to be able to set up a thunderstorm at a specific location for example to try to make a successful landing. I know that there are our plans to add the option to save a specific weather situation for the user to be able to load historical weather into the sim at a later stage. This might be the option that could be transformed into what I'm looking for. I guess we'll have to see. Other features include good rays, which I've seen screenshots of, so that is on the way when the team is ready to release that feature and a lens flare when looking into the sun would be a nice addition too. Anyway, despite the issues in the initial release, I still like this x add-on very very much. It has an immense potential and as mentioned, I haven't seen a more realistic sky representation in x than what x can produce. It's going to be interesting to see where the next couple of updates will take this amazing plugin. Anyhow, I know I'll continue my flying with XEnviro in the future. Thank you so much for watching everybody. Once again, my name is Thomas Rasmussen. I hope you enjoyed this review. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. I hope to see you next time. Until then, take care.